Okay, so now we go to page uh, four. Right. Page four, yeah, this is page four of that handout. Um, and by the way, I don't always have handouts. Normally I start with a blank sheet of paper or graph paper, but sometimes uh, when the writing is so much more like, you know, like these vectors, uh, I, I normally try to save you some time by having things written down where you can just fill in the blank or draw pictures. Okay, the length, magnitude, or norm, they all mean the same thing, by the way. Length, magnitude, norm, sometimes called the modulus of a vector. What is that? Well, it's the length of the vector, uh, and it's denoted with um, sort of like the absolute value, except you do it twice, okay? So um, the book would actually have uh, you with a bold face, and uh, some books will have double lines like I just did, and some of them have single lines like the absolute value. I think it's better to have two or double lines um, because uh, these are not the same as absolute values. If u is a one-dimensional vector, then the absolute value of that length is exactly, I mean, after, well, the absolute value of that coordinate is exactly the magnitude, so they are the same. But for you know higher dimensional vectors, uh, these are not the same. Okay, if u1, u2 is my vector, um, well, that's pretty obvious, right? I mean, if you have, let's say, uh, here's your vector, and it goes from 0, 0 to 2, 3, how long is this vector? Well, that's really easy. And in fact, uh, about 2,500 years ago, um, there are some Greeks who knew how to find the, le the length of that, right? Uh, that's uh, because Pythagoras lived way back there. The norm or the magnitude or the length of the vector is simply following the uh, Pythagorean theorem. It's u1 square plus u2 square, and then you take the square root of that, okay? And again, it's called the magnitude or it's called the norm, and that's how you can find the norm of every non-zero vector. If it's three-dimensional, what is that? Well, you use the three-dimensional version of the distance formula from 0, 0, 0 to u1, u2, u3. And as you know, this is very much the same. Square root of u1 square plus u2 square plus u3 square. Notice here, u1, u2, and u3 do not have uh, the arrow on top because those are not vectors. Okay? u1, u2, u3 are real numbers and not vectors. Now, um, a very important um, word here, it's a, it's, a def, uh, it's a word being defined here, and I will make a big deal about definitions because definitions are super important parts of um, any mathematical uh, topic or, um, or theory. Uh, unit vector is any vector with length one. Now, you know, if you have a vector that's uh, length two, you can make it into length one just by shrinking it, right? If you have a vector of length 2000, just divide that vector by 2000 or scale a multiple by one over 2000 and that you can make that into a unit vector. And that process is actually called normalization, right? Uh, by the way, the magnitude of any vector is positive because it's the positive square root. Well, except for you know, the zero vector, because how long is the zero vector? Yeah, of course, it's the uh, you know, square root of zero plus square plus zero square, and that is equal to zero. All right. Now, this looks kind of funny. You're saying zero is equal to zero. No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is the length or the norm of the zero vector is the real number zero, okay? So there's a big difference between the zero you see on the left-hand side and zero on the right-hand side. These are not even like the same type of beast, so the same type of object, okay? You know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> okay. I, I make a, a, a big deal out of this because I, I do want students to, to know the difference, like what kind of uh, things are we talking about, right? So this is a vector. It happens to be called a zero vector. This is the real number zero, which you um, learned years and years ago, okay? And this statement is saying that the length of the zero vector is actually the number zero. Okay, uh, it turns out if you have uh, something that's non-zero, non-zero, any non-zero vector can be made into a unit vector by a process called normalization. And that's what I was just talking about. It's fairly easy, right? You just divide any vector 
by its length. So if u, and again, writing lags behind here, but if u is not the non-zero vector, if u is not the zero vector, then if you take this u and divide it by, now you can't divide a vector by a vector. Uh, the vector division is not something it's defined. But what you can do is you can divide it by the norm of that vector because that norm is a non-zero real number. Now you say, well, we never divided a number a vector by a number. Well, yeah, technically this is a scalar multiple, right? So the scalar in this case is one divided by the norm or the magnitude of u, okay? And since u is not the zero vector, this is a real number and you multiply this by u. And so that way you can make that vector into a unit vector. Okay, and this process is called a normal, uh, normalization. So I will be talking about this throughout the course. Let's normalize this vector, okay? You first have to normalize this vector. And all that means is uh, to make that into a unit vector by dividing the vector by its, um, its length, right? So here's an example. Um, let's say u is two phi. How long is this vector? And how do you normalize this? Well, let's go ahead and normalize this. Uh, in order to normalize this, you have to know the length of this. And of course, that's easy, right? Uh, what is that? It's two square plus five square, and you take the square root. And so the answer is the square root or radical of yeah, four plus 25, and that's 29. So after you normalize this, the uh, normalization will give you two over root 29, five over root 29. And that is the normalized vector for uh, our vector two five. Okay, any questions? Of course, I can't hear you. So if you have any questions, uh, you can write me an email or you can uh, uh, yell really loud on the other side of the world, um, but probably the former is the better. Just go ahead and write me an email, and if you need more extensive um, kind of a you know tutorial or a office hour visit, then um, uh, I can set up a Zoom lesson or Zoom meeting with you. Okay, so and I will have my office hours that I will announce uh, sometime soon by email or by announcement. Okay, uh, the standard position, this is what I was talking about. Uh, the initial point is the origin, whether it's zero, 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 or zero, zero. And so the standard position, uh, basically uh, referring to the uh, position vector. Right? Now every point, and here's an important thing, I already mentioned this, okay, but every point on the plane the xy plane can be considered the terminal point of a vector, right? So if you have, um, you know, just the, the xy plane, let's say here's a point, okay? What does this point look like? Maybe three, five or something. Well, there is a vector that starts at zero, zero and ends at three, five. So you can think of every point as the terminal point of a, a very specific vector, a unique vector. Therefore, okay, therefore, every two dimensional vector can be represented as a point on the plane and every point on the plane can be uh, represented as the, uh, the terminal point of a vector. So think of a vector and a two dimensional uh, point, the same thing. Okay. You're identifying every point of the plane um, with a vector that terminates at that point, right? So vectors and points on, in the, on the plane are associated or basically identified together. We think of these as the same thing. So what is the plane in this case then? The plane R2, okay, is basically the set of two dimensional vectors. All right, so with that, uh, we have made an identification. We can think of, from now on, we can think of the plane as the set of two dimensional vectors. Uh, you can also write this as something like, R2 
is equal to the set of V, where V is X, Y. I guess that makes sense, right? Uh, it's a set of all vectors V, so that V is X, Y, and of course X and Y belong to the set of real numbers, which is basically saying the same thing as the two-dimensional space being the set of points, ordered pairs. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so, uh, yeah, we only have half a page left here. Um, you can take a look and, uh, you know, just actually, yeah, all right, look, we'll take a little break here and then I'll come back in just a second. 